Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be casting flowers in resin to create a beautiful pyramid nightlight. I will also be making a tall crystal shard and along the way, I'll be sharing lots of tips on how to achieve a bubble free result when working with flowers. If that sounds good to you, stay tuned and enjoy the video. I really wanted to coat all of my dried flowers for today's projects in resin. And before I could do that, I needed to decide what I was going to do with them once they were all wet and coated in resin. So I've made this kind of washing line and it's just two posts and a piece of string. And I've put a puppy pad underneath just to catch all the drips. In the past, when I've used dried flowers in resin, I've found that bits will fall off the flowers and if I've dried the flowers in silica sand, little bits of sand will always also come off the flowers into the resin. And I thought that by coating them first, it would strengthen them, keep them all in one piece and also eliminate all the little bits of the silica sand falling into my finished piece. Here I've got a hydrangea flower from my garden and you've seen me use these before but you won't recognise them because last time I used them they were all dried out without any petals on and I used them in my woodland tree pyramid. You remember the pyramid with the winter trees with no leaves on and you just see the branches? Well, the structure of these flowers is perfect for making those trees. So that's when you've seen these before. But I thought it was time to have a go at using one with the petals on because I think they're so beautiful. The resin which I'm using is transparent resin from Resin Pro and I've put quite a lot into that cup. And I think I know what you might be thinking. <laughs> I think you're thinking, okay, so you've, you're you dipping all your flowers into that cup, into that resin, and all the little bits and loose petals and leaves are going to fall in there. And it's such a waste of resin. Well, it's not because wait and see and you'll see a crafty little trick I've got so that you can use that resin for something else afterwards. I continued the dipping process with all of my flowers and then realised that my washing line wasn't long enough. But never mind, I managed. I For my little rosebuds, I just rested them in a silicon coaster mould and they were fine. So as I just mentioned, all that resin that I mixed got a little bit mucky. All it, Lots of little bits of petal and silica in the resin and I wanted to be able to use it. So I got some nylon tights, old nylon tights, not my best pair. <laughs> and I, as you can see here, I chopped a bit off and then chopped along the side. So, so instead of a tube, it was a long, uh, a flat piece of nylon stocking and just put it over the top and then kept it in place with, a, with an elastic band. And then I could pour the resin from one cup into another and it would take out all the little bits. After that, I did make a couple of coasters and if I'd have been planning forwards a little bit better, I would have had my coasters all planned out but it was just a quick way of just using up the resin because I hadn't planned properly. Um, so there weren't anything special, but I thought I'd keep it in just to show you what I'd done with my leftover resin. Um, yeah, and they look quite pretty. I've used Resin Pro's Sahara colours for these. Okay, on to the main event. Today I'm using iCrystal 5 from Resin Pro. 
The five indicates that that's the maximum depth that you can pour to with this resin. It's really good for deep casting. As you can see, it's coming out quite slowly and that's my fault. I was supposed to heat up part A first in a water bath because my room was a little bit cold. If you find your resin is a little bit thick when it's coming out of the bottle, put it into a water bath and it will thin it down really nicely and it will help to eliminate any bubbles. Um, I was all right because I was going to be using a pressure pot, but I would highly recommend the warm water bath for your part A of your resin. The mixing ratio for this resin is 100 parts A to 67 parts B and that just means that part B needs to be 67% of the weight of part A. Now I know these funny mixing ratios put some people off and they just get confused by it but there's no need to be confused it's really simple all you have to do is measure out part A and for mine I measured out 200 grams of part A and then you need to know what 1% of that is, so you divide it by 100. So that left me with 2. We know that part B needs to be 67% of part A. And we know that 1% of part A is 2. So I multiplied 67 by 2 to get my part B measurement, which was 134 grams. Right, I'm pleased to say the maths lesson is over <laughs> and we can get on with the fun bit. Today I'm making three pieces. I'm doing a large pyramid, a tall crystal shard and a smaller crystal. And the reason for doing the smaller crystal was I wanted to test what this resin would be like if I did not put it in my pressure pot. I usually do use a pressure pot because it's great at eliminating bubbles, but I wanted to be able to show you, and many of you won't have a pressure pot, I understand that. So I wanted to show you how this resin would turn out if I didn't use one. So I'll show you that a little bit later on. Before adding the main part of my resin, I do like to just add a tiny bit first and rub it around the insides of the moulds, especially where there are edges or points where little air bubbles can get trapped. So I just use a, t a long tool just to make sure that everything's covered in resin and it really helps to avoid any bubbles on the surface of the mould. After that, you can pour in your resin and add your flowers. I'm going to fast forward through quite a lot of adding the flowers because I did faff around quite a lot to get them in the right position. Now, with this resin, you can pour up to five centimetres. That's, that's the guidelines that they give you, but it's not entirely as clear as that, really. Because if you look at the shape of the pyramid, it's... It's not as though it's a, going to be a big block of resin. There's not so much at the bottom. So really, you can get away with going over the five centimetres. Not too much. Don't fill the whole thing with it. But you, you could go deeper if you wanted to. My main layer is going to be pretty deep. I think it was around 12 centimetres. So I did do it in two parts. So after you've finished pouring, just leave it to cure for about two to three days. This is a slow curing resin and that's a good thing because it helps, it gives it time for all those bubbles to escape by themselves and most deep casting resins are very slow to cure. Okay, so I left them for three days and now because I didn't show you properly before <laughs> I'm just going to quickly show you how the resin looks if you put it part A into a hot water bath and when I mention a hot water bath what I mean is take a big tub or you know something big you can even use your, your bathroom sink or your kitchen sink fill it with um, hot tap water, just as hot as it gets, not boiling water from a kettle, just the hottest tap water that you can get and put your bottle of part A into there for about 10 minutes and you don't even have to use 
use the bottle. You can pour the, your part A into um, a cup and put the cup in the water. It's up to you which way you want to do it. Now you've just seen me pour out my part B because I'd already measured part A and I had it in the water bath. And did you see how liquid that was? How thin the liquid was compared to the first time when I didn't warm it up? Yeah, well that's that's a massive difference and it's much better when it comes to dispersing the air bubbles. And another thing I need to say is stir it slowly. That is sped up. Stir it as slowly as you can. <laughs> and then just pour it into your mould. You might have noticed that I haven't used a heat gun at all. And I haven't, it's true. It's not that you've just missed it and I've edited it out. I didn't use a heat gun. Um, that's because you don't really need to. The bubbles escape by themselves and I was going to be using a pressure pot. I would only use a heat gun if it was really essential. Um, but when you're using a pressure pot, it's not essential. Heat guns can damage the mould and yeah, that's why I only use them if I really need to. Like I mentioned before, I am going to make a smaller piece just to show you how this resin works without the pressure pot. Just to prove how crystal clear it is even without a pressure pot. So after another three days, the deep casting was all finished and the rest could be done with my regular resin, which is just for up to two centimetre pores and it's much quicker. But first of all, I need to snip away all the bits of the flowers that I don't need anymore. And I'm just using some small jewellery snippers. Now, I don't know if you can see what I thought I could see, but... I thought it wasn't level. It looked wonky to me, but I think it was an illusion. <laughs> you see, it had been in my pressure pot and it's not so easy to get things level inside the pressure pots. So anyway, my plan was, because I thought it was wonky, to level it up on my tabletop and add a very thin layer of clear resin. Oh, and look at my spirit level. I inherited that from my dad and it was his dad's before him he was a carpenter I think it must be about 80 years old that spirit level and it still works I love it anyway back to the point I'm going to use a thin layer of clear and like I say the plan was to level it up but as I poured it on into my level mold I noticed that actually it there wasn't a problem it was already level that first layer and I was worrying about nothing. So this is what you could do if you have an uneven layer. Just add a very thin layer of clear, let it level up and cure and carry on with your pyramid. But as it turned out, this bit wasn't necessary. Um, it was already level. <laughs> So I just continued with my original plan, which was to add some holographic glitter to my resin and do a glittery white layer. And the glitter is from Resin Pro. Just about everything apart from the moulds, everything I've used today is from Resin Pro. Um, yeah, they are my favourite resin supplier and they have loads of lovely glitters and pigments and everything you could think of. Yeah, so I'll put the link to all my Resin Pro things in the description as well as my moulds which will be in my Amazon storefront. Okay, so after six hours that resin was cured and as you can see it looks like there's been a glitter storm. That's because I decided to add some glitter afterwards and I got it everywhere. So yeah, anyway. What you can see me doing here is I've put a ruler over the top and I'm measuring from the resin up to that ruler to see how much space I have left. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to make a barrier from some plexiglass or acrylic sheet to, so that I can have a hollow square in the middle. Having a cavity in the middle serves two purposes. Either you can put lights in there or you can leave it hollow and it's saved you a lot of resin because you're not having to fill the whole thing up. I'm going to be putting a light in mine because I think it looks good. 
So I took some scraps and cut them to size according to those dimensions that I just took and taped them together with clear tape to make a square and it was ready to add into the mould. I'm going to be adding resin around the side of the barrier and so it needs to be completely sealed so that it can't leak underneath. You have two options with this. You can just, well, what you could have done, what I could have done is I could have added that when the last layer of resin was still wet, uncured, should I say, and that would have sorted it, but I wasn't quite forward thinking enough to do that and um, forgot to do the barrier at that stage. So I can't do that, but you could. So what I'm using is um, UV resin. UV resin cures under a UV lamp in two minutes, so it's nice and quick. So that's what I'm doing here, just sealing the edges. But if you don't have UV resin, it's not a problem. You can just use your regular resin. It's just a case of waiting longer for it to cure. Okay, let's add some colour. For my first coloured layer, I'm using the green-blue colour from Resin Pro. It's the Sahara Mica Powder. And I also have a glitter from the Starlight range, which complements this perfectly. I love how the bottles have the little stopper in so you can shake the pigment out like you're shaking salt out um, onto your dinner. <laughs> and it just makes it nice and easy and you don't have to mess about scooping um, the powder out. Just shake it out and it's perfect. I poured in half of it and then added glitter to the other half and then poured that on top just to try and keep some separation and make it a little bit more interesting to look at. Whilst that layer was curing I decided to do a very quick third piece and this is just a small crystal mould about five centimetres deep so it was the perfect size to demonstrate how the epoxy 5 can be just as clear without putting it into a pressure pot because as I told you before I did use a pressure pot and I thought it was a little bit unfair to be showing you a, a casting resin and only showing the results that you get when you use a pressure pot. I wanted you to know what it would be like without that. And so that's what I'm doing now. And I'm rubbing the inside of the mold with my finger and, the, and some of the resin. And as I said before, that helps to make sure there's no surface bubbles on the mold. And I'm just keeping it nice and clear and popping a flower in the middle just to demonstrate how it works with the flowers. Because um, as you might know, if you've tried putting flowers in resin before, they do create their own, their own set of bubbles, which can be, um, yeah, quite challenging. <laughs> but I've covered it in resin at the beginning of this video, didn't I? So it should be fine. Let's see what happens. For the next layer, I wanted a kind of pinky colour to complement the pink in the hydrangea flowers. And I went for the Resin Pro Chameleon pigment. It's a, a kind of pinky colour, but the chameleon pigments do act a bit differently. And yeah, the they change colour in the light. And so what you think you're going to get isn't necessarily what you are going to get and you'll see at the end that it's not the pink I was expecting but it did work really well. Anyway I'm using the pink um, chameleon pigment and some crushed glass and then at the end adding some um, of the blue just into the pink that I mixed. That uh, The idea of that was to make a kind of purpley colour but that didn't happen. It went more of a brown colour. However, <laughs> even though that worried me a bit, when I demoulded it, I found that it was actually really good. So no problem at all there. And while I remember, I just want to mention, do you remember before I said that it looked like there'd been a glitter storm and I got glitter everywhere? I left the glitter stuck to the mould because if you start wiping at the mould you can break the seal between the resin and the mould and I didn't want to do that. So that's why I uh, left it there. 
Okay, so we're on to the very last layer, finally. <laughs> the last layer is cured and now I'm doing a white layer. And it's just going to be a very thin line at the bottom of the pyramid. I find that adding white gives it a crisp finish and that's what I wanted. And I also wanted to use it in the middle because I'm going to have a light inside. And I thought that having the light shining directly through that layer that you can see there in the middle would be too bright. So I added some of the white in the middle as well. And the colorant I am using for this is the white pigment paste from Colour Fun, which is also from Resin Pro. Everything will be linked in the description. You can get everything on there with your 10% discount code, don't forget. So yeah, it's the Colour Fun white pigment paste and that works really well. I didn't put too much in. I didn't want it to be too stark. I just added a little bit so it's kind of semi-opaque. Okay, we're nearly there, but before I take it out of the mould, I just wanted to show you how I make the cover for my light um, compartment. Because uh, obviously you don't want the light falling out. So I just cut a piece of plexiglass or acrylic sheet, whatever you want to call it. And I've got some Velcro, sticky back to Velcro. Um, and it's a really heavy duty one, so it's not going to come off, hopefully. <laughs> That's the idea. And I was just going to cut it up into four squares and put it on the corners of the plastic and then add it to the pyramid. And then that was ready. In my previous pyramid night lights, I've used fairy lights and the battery compartment that comes with them. But one of my viewers recommended using one of these puck lights. I think they're called puck lights. <laughs> Something like that. You put them underneath kitchen cupboards and things and it's remote controlled. So it means I don't have to open everything up to turn it on or off. So that's what I got to try. And let's see what the results will be like with that. It's um, got all different colour settings, but yeah, I think I will just use the white on it. I think it, I think they're really good and it's a lot easier than adding loads of fairy lights all the time. So after I'd added that cover, I just took four adhesive rubber um, feet and stuck them to the corners and then it was ready to take out of the mould. Yay! The best bit. <laughs> I couldn't wait, honestly. It had been such a long process. <laughs> I was so excited to take it out the mould and see what it would look like. So I hope you're ready. I didn't film the demoulding of the crystal shard though because that one was a pain to get out. I had to do it in water. <laughs> but it came out in the end and you will see it in a minute. One of the coolest things about the resin I use today is that it has an ultra low exothermic reaction which basically means it doesn't overheat, it doesn't get really hot and that coupled with the fact that I didn't use a torch meant that the mould came off really easily and there weren't any places where it had got stuck to the resin. Sometimes if it overheats it will get fused to the resin. The iCrystal 5 also has a 10-year non-yellowing guarantee. So that was perfect for this. With a, Because I've used clear, clear resin can sometimes show that it's got starting to go yellow. But because of that 10-year guarantee, this one should stay beautiful for at least 10 years. So now let's have a look at the small crystal which I did that did not go in the pressure pot just to see how clear it is. I think you'll agree that it's pretty clear. There were a couple of micro bubbles in there, but not, not loads. And yeah, I think it's quite glass-like. There are some bubbles that have been trapped in the flower, but that's just uh, being trapped as the flower's gone in. That's nothing to do with um, gases in the resin. It's just to do with the crevices in the flowers. And I did have that in everything I made, just because the air gets trapped. But yeah, I can, I can safely say that that is very, very clear. So now let's have a closer look. 
I really like how the texture from those glass pieces in that pink layer, the texture, it kind of matches the texture of the flowers, if you know what I mean, and it mirrors them really well. So I was really happy in the end with how that turned out, even though at the, at the time I wasn't too sure about the colour. So yeah, really, really happy. And see if you can find any bubbles that aren't anything to do with air being trapped, just micro bubbles. If you can see any, let me know because I can't. I think this one demonstrates the clarity even better than the pyramid. I was so pleased with this one when I took it out of the mould and I looked at it and thought, wow, <laughs> it's just like looking through glass. I was so excited and I couldn't wait to show you. So here it is and I'd love to know what you think. My turntable has a light in it and when I switched it on and saw how beautiful this looked lit up, I knew straight away I was going to have to purchase a light up stand to go underneath it. So here's some photographs to have a closer look. I love the way the bubbles which have been trapped in the hydrangea flowers Actually, they look okay. They look like dewdrops in the flowers, so I got away with it. So I was really pleased with that. Well, we've reached the end of the video and it's time to say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't already subscribed, I'd really, really appreciate it if you did. It helps the channel a lot. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now. <laughs>